Welcome to the 5 p.m. edition of the Prep Pigskin Report, brought to you by the Bill Howell family of companies. Why? Because they know how. We will be checking in with all six live venues throughout the next two hours. You're watching KUSI, but we start with the Chick-fil-A Game of the Week, the Battle of La Jolla, the La Jolla Vikings hosting La Jolla Country Day. I'm joined, of course, by the newest member of the PPR team, Coach Troy Starr. Coach, we have a, a special guest today, Vikings head coach, Matt Morrison. Why don't you take it away? Coach Morrison, Burmeister, he's a weapon. How are you going to stop him? Are you going to blitz him or are you going to bring cover? He's a stud. He's better than advertised. Uh, you know, we got to mix up our looks, but I think it's really tough to blitz him because he gets the ball out of his hands so fast. Um, and, if, and if you don't get home and he's able to break through that first wave, he's fast enough that you're not going to catch him. So we've got to be really sound in our covers that we play. We need to make sure our guys in the middle or our guys up front can keep him inside and in front of us. Um, and we've got to make sure that when he does start scrambling around that we stay attached in coverage because he's good enough with his arm. He can be running one way, throw it across the field another and put it on a dime. You're talking about Braxton Burmeister who committed to Arizona. He plays for La Jolla Country Day, but committed to Arizona as a sophomore, right? Yeah. So uh, that's, that's how good he is. Matt, I know uh, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about your dad in a little bit, but preparing for this moment to be a head coach at, at San Diego level here in one of the greatest places to play high school football. No question. I think this was a building block in your career. Go ahead. People who don't know it, 13 years ago, this first year head coach was the very first pigskin idol. I'm a junior quarterback at Francis Parker, and tonight I'll be bringing you highlights from El Cajon Scripps Ranch. The Falcons looking more like Cowboys tonight, getting ready to face the Braves. We'll pick it up in the third quarter. To Scripps Ranch holding on to the narrow 7-0 lead. But there goes El Cajon's Perry Gardner with the 80-yard touchdown run. Matt, we were just listening to your excellent narration. You were the first ever pigskin idol. What do you remember from that night? I remember being nervous as you can be, um, <laughs> but I, it was a lot of fun. You know, I, I think that was sort of before I knew I wanted to follow in my family's footsteps and get into coaching. As you guys can probably tell from the tape, I, I figured out pretty quickly <laughs> after that coaching was going to be a smart solution. <laughs> you know, uh, what I was going to ask you, Coach, is it, it's got to be fabulous just to have a dad who's a longtime successful coach to use as a resource it's it's such a blessing it really is and I'm you know I'm very fortunate um, you know to to come from sort of his philosophy you know one of his big things was your players don't really care how much you know till they know how much you care and I really learned that from him when I was a kid I got to play under him as a player and then I got to work with him as a coach and, and really see that in action and we're trying to implement that here um, but it's, it's just tremendous to be able to, we watch film together every week. He's able to, to, to see things and, and remind me of stuff that I'm missing as I'm you know, trying, not to, trying not to drown in my first year as a head coach. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's able to be at a lot of our games and, and, and spot and see things. And, and you know, just great for me to be able to call and, and be able to, you know, to share the experience with my, my favorite part of coaching was the seven years I got to spend working alongside him. And uh, we're trying to recruit him to get over here and join the staff. Uh, I, I think we might I be able to do that. I suspect one day. Uh, Madison traveling here to Southwestern College to take on the Benita Vista Barons. On the Barons is a player by the name of Dean Clazer. He missed the entire last year of his career because he came down with a rare form of cancer. He's going through an eligibility issue right now, so we're not quite sure when he's going to take the field again. But, man, is that going to be emotional. He lost almost 30 pounds and lost all of his hair. Here now my interview with him from, from a, several minutes ago. Dean, it's an absolute pleasure to, to be in your presence. You had cancer for one year, you're in full remission. I want you to talk about how it changed you as a young man. Uh, it just changes your um, perspective and uh, makes you not take anything for granted. Are you happier? I am happier. I'm just thankful to be healthy and back on the field. Do you not sweat the small stuff? No, not as much. <laughs> do people sometimes, do you sense that they, they, they learn from you just the way you live your daily life based on the fact that you had cancer and didn't know what was gonna happen? I'd say people like, I inspire some people. Um, just makes them like really appreciate like what happened and um, they don't really stress the small stuff. Yeah. What's it going to be like the first time you run onto a high school football field? It's, Hopefully that'll be this season. It's going to be emotional. Um, it's definitely going to, it's been a long time and I just can't wait to get back. And um, talk about your future. Well, you, you're going to be playing in college. Talk about that. Um, yeah, I, I plan to play in college and I love this game and I want to play at the next level and I think I can. And uh, but first, I gotta gotta get on the field this year. Dean, thank you for being such an inspiration. Thank you. God bless you. And Paul, I, I assume he's probably only 18 years old, but I thought I was talking to a 50-year-old man. I mean, the wisdom, the maturity, the courage after you know battling cancer for a year, not knowing whether he's going to make it, but. He's in complete remission. He's, he's do, doing okay. And we, when he takes the field, oh, man, it's going to be like a movie. And, of course, it is Friday. That means it's time for the countdown to the KUSI Prep Pick.
pigskin report. Paul Rudy and his team of Red Jackets are standing by to take us to all the action. Paul. You are looking at the Motley crew, all the live reporters from the Prep Picks Report as we try to bring you the very best in San Diego high school football. But before there can be PPR, there must be news. You are watching the KUSI News at 6 p.m. Now this is the pre-PR brought to you by Bill Howell's Family Companies. Why? Because they know how. And I know somebody who knows how. That's Stephanie Kelly out in the East County. The Rattler speaks now. Talk to us, Steph. Thanks, Paul. We're out here at Steel Canyon High School for the El Cajon Ford East County Game of the Week. The Cougars hosting the Granite Hills Eagles. Now, last year, both of these teams had sophomores starting at quarterback. We had Jacob Siegfried at Granite Hills and Thomas Fishburn at Steel Canyon. This year, the Cougars have stuck with Fish, while Granite Hills brought another sophomore, Chris Ostring, into the mix. Earlier today, we spoke with both head coaches to see what their plans were for tonight under center. He's just seeing the field better, and we're, we're giving him a lot more freedom at the line of scrimmage where last year it, he pretty much, whatever we called, he ran because he just didn't know. We didn't want him making adjustments. This year, if he sees something at the line of scrimmage and he wants to check, it, check out of what we've called, he's, he's free reign to do it. So, Unfortunately, the sophomore Chris went, went out last week with a collarbone injury, so Jake's going to be the guy full time, which is fine. He was our guy pretty much all year last year as a sophomore, did a good job for us, so that's kind of what we're, what we're rolling with right now. And uh, He's got a lot of leadership qualities and has the experience, so it's, it's not a bad thing. Um, he's definitely a lot faster, a lot stronger. Um, you know, carries himself a little bit better. He's not that shy sophomore anymore. So all those leadership qualities are, are definitely, he, he's uh, showing those for us this year. So it's been good. Coach Longerbone was trying to get you to commit to who was going to be your guy tonight. <laughs> Did you play with them a little? Did you give them any inside info? Yeah, he uh, he was he was all confused because actually Chris wore a different different number for our second week. He's like, how do you, have, you're playing three guys, you know, who do you, who do you have? He's trying to prick, pick my brain all week. Uh, I was trying to get some info out of him and say, who are you going to play? Because he's had like five quarterbacks take snaps this year. So I'm sitting there going, can you just give me a hint? Like, give me a little something to tell me who's going to actually get the ball tonight. So, I don't know, we're just going to go out there and see what happens. In true East County fashion, those two coaches are good friends and they like to give each other a hard time. So it should be a fun little local rivalry out here tonight. As a side note, Coach Cobbs had his appendix taken out last minute, last Thursday night, made it to the game Friday, but had to sit in the stands. So he's happy to be back in action today on the sidelines. And Paul, I think Coach Starr knows a little something about developing those young quarterbacks. Michael Austin comes to mind off the top of my head right now. That's right, uh, Coach. Uh, Stephanie was talking about how you've developed a few young quarterbacks in your day. What's the trick to developing a young quarterback? You know, it's repetition, repetition. You got to get them on the board. You got to—he's got to be able to draw the plays, explain the plays, and you got to keep working the movement key and the progression. 